Good day everyone! Here in the US, using a stethoscope to listen to our patient's lungs is part of our daily routine on our assessment part. And we do it every day on all of our patients. So today, I'm going to share to you based on my experience on how to auscultate the lungs with tips and tricks of getting a better sound quality. And of course, with audio lung sample sounds for you guys to appreciate and determine the different lung sounds that we normally hear on our patients. So stay tuned and watch till the end. I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. First thing you have to learn is how to use a stethoscope. And here are some tips and tricks for you to use. Number one, make sure to angle out the earpiece towards your nose, this way, before wearing one. Then, make sure it is snug fit to your ears as it forms a seal inside your ear, lessening the sounds you hear outside the stethoscope. You can do this by pressing or clamping the stethoscope gently. So whenever you try to listen to the lungs and you hear background noises, just do this technique and it will help lessen the background noises. Number two, in order for us to hear the lung sounds, we have to use the diaphragm side of the stethoscope. So make sure it is properly turned on for that particular side. Tap on the diaphragm bell while twisting the switch. You can definitely feel it in your ears if it is in the right place. Number three, when you hold the stethoscope, try not to hold or touch the bell parts of the stethoscope as this will produce sounds, especially if you are using a cheap kind of stethoscope. Place the stethoscope in between your middle finger and index finger. Then, apply gentle pressure over the patient's skin while auscultating. Number four, it is better to auscultate directly to the skin to be more accurate and maximize the lung sounds. Clothes, hair, or anything between the skin and the stethoscope sometimes produces sounds that we might mistaken for advantageous sounds. Number five, make sure to listen for the entire cycle of the inspiratory and expiratory process before moving to the next location. Determine which part of the breathing cycle you can hear the abnormal lung sounds, if it is during the inhalation or expiration or both. Number six, perform the procedure on a quiet environment for optimum auscultation, as it is hard to listen and focus on the lung sounds if the environment is too noisy, even with proper techniques. Number seven, sitting position is the best position. Make sure the patient is comfortable when you're doing this assessment. If the patient is struggling to maintain a certain position, it impedes a proper lung expansion, thus providing a poor assessment. Number eight, take note that the right lung has three lobes and the left has only two lobes. Then, the next thing you have to learn is the placement of the stethoscope. This is the overview of the stethoscope placement together with the sequence you're going to go by one breathing cycle at a time, or more if you could not appreciate the lung sounds during the first breathing. We are doing it on both sides as to compare the lungs between the two lobes. We call this the ladder technique. So for the front side, we start at the apex of the lungs, slightly above the clavicle, going from left to the right, then downward or down the ladder as shown on this picture. When listening to the front area, it is more tricky as you have to differentiate between the lung sounds and the heart sounds, sometimes as well as with the abdominal sounds. It takes time to practice this skill and get used to different sounds. You can hear them simultaneously at some point, but try to focus and listen more on the lung sounds. Then, on the back side, we start at the apex of the lungs, which is found just above the scapula area. Start from the left, then to the right, then going downwards until you finish the whole cycle as shown in the picture. Honestly, you would rarely see anyone doing these entire steps. Most of the doctors and nurses would skip most of these steps, I myself included. As long as you cover the entire lung fields, that would be sufficient. Most of the time, I can hear or auscultate better and differentiate the abnormal lung sounds at the backside of the patient, as compared to the front. Take note, it takes time and continuous practice to train your ears to be able to pick up and differentiate the lung sounds. I dare you, try doing this every day for all of your patients and I'm sure you will get the hang of it within one week or so. Here in the US, you are required to do this as this is part of your shift's assessment on every patient. Since you already know where to place the stethoscope properly and where to listen the lung sounds, now let's move to what to listen to and to be able to differentiate these sounds from one another. These are the usual breathing sounds you can hear from your patients. Let's start with the normal breath sounds. Next, we start with the wheezes.
wheezes are heard more or mostly on expiration. It is a high-pitched sound or musical sound associated with asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, COPD, smoking, heart failure, inhalation of a foreign object into the lungs. Next is ronchi. Fine crackles, lower pitched sounds. Coarse crackles are higher pitched sounds and louder as compared to the fine crackles. Fine crackles are lower pitch. As Ronkais are similar to whistles, but they are lower pitch sound version of it. Similar to snoring sounds. Ronkais are mostly associated with pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, and cystic fibrosis. the sounds, and you guys try to guess. Next is tridor. It is. Determine which part of the breathing cycle can hear the abnormal lung sounds if it is during the inhalation or expiration. Tridor is or heard on inspiration. Inhalation and it is loud period. with a high pitched sounds. It is heard louder over the throat area. Air moving roughly or over a particular obstructed upper airways, blocking the larynx. It is considered a medical emergency. It often occurs on the biggest airway, associated with person choking on an object, swelling in the throat, or laryngospasm. Next is crackles. Another name for crackles is rails. There are two types of crackles, fine crackles and coarse crackles. Crackles are more commonly heard on inspiration. Most of them can be heard over the bases of the lungs where fluid is collected or pulled down. Crackles are associated with CHF, COPD, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, bronchiectasis, or after blood transfusion, or fluid overload. And COVID-19. Now, let's listen to the coarse crackles. Coarse crackles are higher pitch sounds and louder as compared to the fine crackles. You can compare it to the sound a Velcro creates when you open it. It signifies fluid buildup. Next is the fine crackles. Fine crackles are lower pitch as compared to the coarse crackles. The sound is similar when you roll a strand of hair between your two fingers. Next is the diminished breath sounds. Here are a few reasons for decreased breath sounds. Number one, air or fluid found around the lungs like in cases of pneumonia, heart failure, and fluoral effusion. Number two, thickness of the chest wall. Number three, overinflation of part of the lungs like emphysema. Number four, reduce airflow to the part of the lungs. Which I typically hear for patients who has COVID-19 as well. Next is the fluoral friction rub. It can be heard on both expiratory and inspiratory, on the lateral or basal. So let's test if you got it right. I'll play the sounds again, then you guys listen and try to guess which type of lung sounds you can hear. Did you pass the test? If not, play back and listen again, and review the definitions as well. On my next series of videos, I'll focus more on what happens after you pass the visa interview and the journey going here in the United States. So make sure to click the subscribe button and share to those friends who might need it. I'm Nurse Juan De La Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you for watching.